Uh, I'm Zane Adam. I'm GM for um, Azure and Middle West Services based out of Redmond. All right. So, cloud. Uh, first, let me tell you about my job, which you didn't ask, but I'll tell you because I've been thinking about it. I think it's, so I've been with Microsoft about 12 years. And within that, I've done a bunch of new businesses for the company. Everything from starting storage marketing many moons ago when I had more hair. And then uh, going into uh, Eastern Europe and running a marketing in Eastern Europe and being part of emerging countries. Uh, doing high performance computing and starting that off for the company. Virtualization for the last many years and then about six months ago, Azure. And I, I feel all of that was in prep for this job. And I used to think virtualization was similar, but, but it's a continuum actually in, in my head and, and I'll, I'll tell you why. But it's not often that in a career you get a job where you're leading a change in the industry. Cloud is one of them. Forget about Azure for a second, just cloud. It's going to shift the way computing works and how we think about it. The next gen in five, ten years, people at IT pros are not going to think about the same things we do or we've done for the last ten years. It's just a paradigm shift that's coming and it's amazing I get to see this. I got to see virtualization but this is at a massive scale and seeing this is just it excites me and then being part of driving that change in market I feel like I just won the lottery somewhere and, and eventually uh, it's, it's, it's just gonna change how we think and the innovation it brings in. And, and I'll, I'll share stories about that and, and it's different it's not about IT pros by itself or developers by itself or who can build the big data centers and what technology. It's the impact it's happening. Cloud computing has globally. Everything from how emerging markets are going to consume this to drive the education and GDP forward versus mature markets which are thinking about CapEx and OpEx. When I go to governments and emerging markets and have the discussion, it's not CapEx, OpEx. They're talking about, hey, I can take computing down to people who've never used machines before which helps their kids get educated because you can run the data center and I don't have to invest in it. I can invest in implementation and traction versus running data centers. So the GDP in the next 10 years can move forward faster. It's like bringing communities up, which, is, which doesn't happen often in technology. We all think about, what am I gonna sell to you? What, what equipment am I gonna use? What are we gonna do? But having that long impact which that cloud computing can have on humans. It's just amazing. I mean, I, I, as I learn, I find that. And then, of course, like I said, in developer world, it's a very different story where we are going through the bits and bytes and the OPEX and, and all that while seeing the new innovation come in. So we have customers implementing cloud or, or the decision making for going to cloud or not is not OPEX and uh, is not just OPEX and CAPEX. Uh, EasyJet is one of them. As I learned, they're trying to solve the problem of, I want to reduce the queues at the airport. If I do remote check-in for people, where people walk in and out, that's going to make it much quicker uh, for my customers to get checked in, which gives me an advantage in the market, right? But at the same time, the customer service gets better. Wow, I think that's, that's good. We want better customer service in all airlines, I mean, paid or anything we do. So it's brilliant. And then they go and look at things like, if I implement myself, I have to go invest in an infrastructure for peak. An airline industry, I'm assuming, and I, uh, has big peaks. Holidays, regular days. So investing for peak would cost a lot. And that could, and now I'm making a statement, uh, I'm not sure it's valid or not. Most of the time, those peak investments break the budget, and those uh, innovative solutions don't get implemented. Like, dude, I can't spend a million dollars on this. Uh, and I'm not saying that's the right number I'm making it up. Well, by using Azure, they were able to do this, or they're going to be able to do this, because it's not a million dollars, for example, or two million, or whatever the peak investment would have been. It is right there, put it up, it scales up and down, so you don't have to invest for peak, and you don't have to pay for peak. You pay when you use for peak, an hour later, if you're not at peak, you pay less. So your cost structure changes. It goes up and down with revenue. And if, if cost is a percentage of revenue, it's a beautiful thing when it can scale up and down with revenue. So then new um, innovative applications can quickly come to market because the barriers of entries are not as high because our investment models change. Those kind of things are happening. That means new things will be tested quicker. New innovative things will happen which will solve our current frustrations and bring new business models. Startups can easily come to market because of the cloud. 
I have to develop an app and not worry about buying a thousand servers. Don't have to raise as much capital. All this thing is happening because of computing, cloud computing. And, and that's what I meant, like, it's not, hey, I'm coming in OpEx, CapEx. People are saying, okay, now I have the ability to leverage the cloud to do something different and new. That's the learning we're getting, and I think that's, that's, that's core. And our strategy is simple. We want to enable, we want to be the providers of that computing power, period, right? Uh, whether it's on-prem or off-prem. So virtualization, private cloud for your on-prem work, uh, and off-prem, where we are operating, it would be Azure. As we went down this path, there was a lot of demand from large customers and government saying, we want Azure, but we want to run it ourselves in our data center which doesn't mean we want to put bodies against it, but we want it in our data center. And about, I think June, July, about five, six months ago, we announced um, the concept of Azure Appliance. And we announced the first three partners are Dell, HP, Fujitsu. The first big customer is gonna be eBay, and then we're gonna push it out. And these are big Azure appliances that will run on customer premise. We, uh, the infrastructure and all we'll manage, and the customer runs the uh, the application that manages all of that. And that's bringing this new architecture of Azure, this high-scale, flexible architecture on-prem for the customer to use. It's still the cloud, it's just a cloud running out of their data center versus the cloud running out of Microsoft's data center. So it gives customer an option to go, hey, I want to use the new operating system. I want to use the capabilities of the cloud. I want it out of my data center. It also gives my partners an opportunity because they can run it out of their data centers and then service the customers. So you start having these uh, Azure data centers that are owned by a mixed match of people, Microsoft, our partners, and in some cases our customers, and the infrastructure is managed by us. So it brings this technology further. The other thing I learned, and then I should stop, and then we should go into an as needed, is that there's a lot of confusion in cloud computing. Most big companies, now I'm talking IT vendors. So we are in cloud business because we're gonna build a big data center and buy a lot of machines and put operating system and stuff on it and sell it as a service. No, you're a big holster. All you did was take the stuff, put, um, bought a lot of it so you get a discount and you're offering it as economies of scale. That is cloud, but that's not the modern architecture that you're bringing out to modern application that can elastically scale because it's the same API, it's the same everything, you're just operating on my behalf and charging me differently, right? Which is fine. But you don't get scale out of that, and let me tell you what I mean. On average, they'll have one administrator for a few hundred servers, if they're highly efficient. But they won't get to where Azure, because by the design of the software is to scale, where we want one admin to four or 5,000 servers, right? That's that economy that has to come. That doesn't come from buying a bunch of hardware that comes from buying a bunch of hardware and putting innovative different software on it which utilizes it in a different way. So it can automate and be self-healing, which I know is an overused word, word self-load balancing. If five machines go down, it doesn't matter. Nobody has to go fix them. It, it'll happen. So it's the, it's the fabric controller that becomes a differentiation in that point. So even the cloud itself is going to have different ways of being consumed. Sorry, of implementation. Consumption will be similar, pay as you go, but the uh, model is gonna be different. Some are gonna be just buy a lot and I'll consolidate and sell you the service. Others like us are investing in the software that actually takes the cloud to the next level. Right? And that's in a nutshell. And one thing I don't wanna forget, the role of the IT pro. Well, uh, so 12 years ago when I started, I was in MCS. And I'll tell you the story for a reason. So I was a consultant and that was my uh, gig. I used to go and deploy servers and desktops. And even in the last 12 years, that job has changed, right? So IT pros, for people in IT, one of the unique abilities I think people have in, in IT is change is just part of every day's wake up, right? It changes every day. How many of you were thinking virtualization 10 years ago? How many of you, one, how many of you didn't know what virtualization is right now? Most of us, right? I mean, change and learning. How many of us were saying SANS is everywhere on Earth, but like now, or NAS and DAS? I mean, change is part of our life. Welcome to IT. Right? The question now becomes is, 
how do we leverage the change so we can do what we love doing, which is taking technology to market as a group of individuals. That's what we do. Yep. I don't think that changes much in the following sense. Developers will continue developing. They won't worry about the boxes as much. IT, I, I, IT pro, the infrastructure is going to move around. There'll be large data centers. They'll need people. Automation will happen, and different value will be added by IT pros, right? Everything from how do I architect this? What do I consume? You still have to go buy that service. So how much? Is that the right way? Are we modeling our apps to take advantage and being built for the modern architecture now? So there'll be multiple different um, input streams that the IT pro will get plugged in and, and developers will get plugged in. Uh, uh, it's going to be different, but it's not going to fundamentally mean we don't have a job. So it's, it's more of a consultancy role rather than getting your hands in there, nitty gritty of backer servers and, and things like that. It's more but somebody's like, backing up those servers. Yeah, in those big, in data, the big data centers, centers right? Yeah. Then, then the question will be, will they be consulting? No, somebody's going to be coding. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to write itself. Somebody has to think about what the, what is this application going to do before yeah. I start coding. Right? So, so you're going to always have those. Then, then the question will become, is somebody going to be sitting out there and pushing a button to back up? No, that may automate, but it's been automating in local data centers anyways. Welcome to private cloud and virtualization. That's, that's what private cloud does, right? It takes a virtualization, puts automation on it, defines a cluster where VMs are going to move around and there'll be load balancing and welcome and increase utilization, right? Virtualization increased utilization for many years. The number of servers people are buying didn't go down. The curve still goes up, people are still buying similar servers even though we are uh, utilizing them better because there's so many other projects that keep popping. Storage has become more and more efficient and cheaper and cheaper every year but the sales still go up and we still ship more and more as an industry, more and more storage capacity because all of a sudden we store more stuff. So I don't think any of that changes, just new innovations come in and new different things will happen and, and it'll be there. Now the second thing is, it's not like tomorrow morning we'll wake up and everybody's in the cloud. This is a journey. So it's not like tomorrow there are no data centers and all, it's still gonna be there, right? This is a transformation that's going to happen over a long time. Um, uh, and, and even at the end, you'll, you'll see a mixed environments where you will have on-prem data centers, you will have off-prem data centers. <coughs> Let me give you a case in point. Azure Appliance, when the customer or a big hoster or an SI puts it in the data center, is the data center. It's not going away, right? So that's what I mean. I think. The evolution is not that, hey, there'll be three data centers in, on Earth and boom, everything else is being consumed. We're going to have mixed environments and people will evolve and we're going to do different things as IT pros and we won't be out of the job.